Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. In the part 1 of this video series we have shown how we plan to build our own automated system that will take care of watering our house plants. Also we have built our own sensor that will be taking readings like soil moisture, temperature and ambient light. In case you missed the part 1 of the video series I recommend you go watch that one first otherwise some of the things in this video might not make too much sense. Link is in the video description. Also, this entire project is provided as open source, open hardware, so you can check it out from GitHub repository that is also linked in the video description. Today we are going to continue with the houseplant watering system and build a central unit. This unit talks to all of our sensors and other devices on the I2C bus and collects the data. This data then gets forwarded to our database and dashboard unit. This way we can easily analyze and plot the data over time and decide what do we want to do when certain conditions are met. Our central unit is going to be pretty simple. We have a ESP32 that is the main controller of our central unit. It will act as I2C master that talks to other devices to collect data and issue commands. And also it will act as a web server through which we can fetch the data and issue commands. Now if you're asking what commands, we only have built sensors so far, I'll explain that in a second. Other features of the central unit is that it will have a driver for a DC water pump. This is so we can turn the water pump on and off to water the plants. And we also have this connector for the water flow sensor, which allows us to measure how much water did we dispense. Now you can see that we have the pump and we have the flow sensor, which allows us to water the plant and measure how much water did flow through our system. But unless we want to water all the plants at the same time, we need a way to select which plant needs water. Now, if you recall in the part one of this series, we defined our own I2C communication protocol and some of you even commented that it might be an overkill for what we are trying to achieve. This protocol allows us to have many different devices on the same bus, but not only that, it allows us to easily distinguish which device is which and also what capabilities it has. Because of this, it was super easy to add another device type, which is a solenoid valve driver. This board is our solenoid driver that has 80 tiny 814 microcontroller on it and a driver circuit for a solenoid valve. This unit acts as another I2C device on our bus. It receives a command to return a solenoid's current state or to actually turn the solenoid on or off. We can add one solenoid valve per plant and that's how we can select exactly which plant we want to water. It's time for a demo. And while you're watching the demo, keep in mind that all of these steps will be fully automated. We are doing them manually now just to take a closer look and examine how the system works. But keep in mind that in the next video, we will have the system fully automated and take care of our house plans all on its own. So make sure you're subscribed and ring that bell so you don't miss when that video comes out. On power up, central unit will scan the I2C bus. For every I2C device it finds, it will ask the device to send back its identification and capabilities. This is basically a central unit asking the device, hey, who are you and what can you do? I2C device responds with I'm a plant sensor or solenoid driver or any other device type you might have added to your system. After central unit has completed this step for every device on the bus, it now knows how many I2C devices it has and also what are their capabilities. So in part 1 we have covered how our sensors work and how we talk to them. In this video we also covered how we discover each sensor or solenoid and how we collect the data. Let's show how all of this works with a demo. Here I have a mockup of our house watering system with just 4 sensors and 4 solenoids. Obviously I modified the interconnects, tube length, reservoir and few other things so everything can fit in the same shot so you can get a better idea of how the system will work. Here we have our DC water pump that is submerged in a reservoir filled with water. It is directly connected to our flow sensor that will measure how much liquid has passed through our water line. Then we have these T-splitters that allow us to branch the main water line into each solenoid valve. These solenoid valves are being driven by our solenoid driver board and when turned on it will allow the water to flow from the main water line to our house plant. If solenoid is shut off, then there is no water flow to that plant. We can also run the pump and turn on all the solenoids to get the air out of our system before use. Our system here is ready to go. And let's say we want to water the plant that is attached to our second solenoid with 100 milliliters of water. That's roughly 3.5 ounces. 
First, we will send water plant command to central unit. This command has two parameters. One is which solenoid to open and second, how much water to dispense. Immediately, we can see that the water pump has turned on and also red LED on our solenoid driver is on to indicate valve is open. Central unit will keep the valve open until requested amount of water has been dispensed. After that, it will close the solenoid and turn off the water pump. And that's it. Super simple. We just specify which plant and how much water we want and the central unit does the rest. This allows us to water each individual plant with precise amount of water and also as often as we please or as the plant needs it. Another important thing to keep in mind is that this, as well as the other parts of the system, will be fully automated. This means we configure it once and everything else will be done for us automatically. Watering the plants this way gives us a lot of flexibility because we can take so many things into the account and then custom tailor different profiles like which plant to water, water in the morning or at night or keep the soil moisture constant, compensate when there is heat or not enough light and so on. Also we can actively keep track of what is the soil moisture, temperature and ambient light so we can use this for long-term analysis, looking for patterns or trends, but also as a sort of very slow closed loop. Let me explain that. For example, we can water the plant with a little bit of water, wait a couple of minutes, check soil moisture, and if the soil moisture is not enough, water it again. Check soil moisture, and only if it's above the set threshold, mark the plant that it has been watered for that day. And that's all for today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please consider clicking on that like button and subscribing to my channel. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!